Hi Transformer fans, it's Evan. Uh, I'm here to give you guys an update on the Transformers HasLab Victory Saber. Uh, we've gotten our first EP1 sample in, EP1 being an engineering pilot, and I'm gonna walk you through it and kind of talk about it a bit. Um, what I have laid out right here is pretty much what you're gonna get right out of the box, minus the MicroMasters. Uh, the factory did not send those to us just yet because they're just redecos, so we'll be getting them at the next stage, so expect them in the next video. I'm gonna start with Star Saber. So, starting off right here, through the magic of editing, I put them on a roundabout so I can give you guys kind of the full turn here. Um, so, this is an EP1. So, don't freak out, there's no paint on it yet. An EP1 is usually just a rough model, first shot of the tools that we get in. They're normally not even in the correct colors. Uh, they normally kind of come in whatever was left in the tools. I actually got some samples this morning that were neon yellow, which was hilarious. Um, but for this sample, they actually try to really match our deco sheets, but some colors are still slightly off, so we'll be updating those as we're going forward. All right, let's actually do a quick height check. Um, here we go, next to Earthrise Optimus Prime. And actually, here, let me put him right there so you can really see the size difference. And then the Siege Hound. So yeah, he's very tall. <laughs> he's practically a commander class, so. Okay, so let's obviously start talking about his most iconic accessory, which was his sword. Uh, when we showed off the gray model to you guys, it was in the toy accurate blade position, so with the blade like this, but as you can see, we've added a cross guard. So you can change it to the animation accurate version as well. And yes, um, so the sword blade is in the clear mold. It's obviously gonna be painted silver. This clear mold came in very dark for this first version, so we're gonna be lightening it actually. Uh, one of the things that I'm super excited about and I wanted to make sure that he could do, and Yuki-san as well, was make sure that he could hold the sword with both hands because there's a couple very iconic anime poses that have him like holding the sword with two hands uh, so you can kind of see like how these joints here kind of flare out this is kind of that butterfly joint that i was talking about in some of those early videos and maybe it was hard to see because it was an all gray model um but yeah so those actually kind of ratchet out right here so you can see it's got some very satisfying clicks he's got a great range of motion here let me put the blade back but yeah so that's the start of his accessories uh blade storage is something i kind of want to talk about because i seem to have glossed over it when in the haze of doing the first haslab videos which happens um so blade storage obviously in the anime the blade was always stored in the back here um so we do have a 5mm port back there, so he can store the blade back there. In the anime, whenever he would reach his hand around and put it back there, the whole thing would disappear, and I always thought that was like a really cool idea, uh, just because it's like, you look back on the G1 cartoon, and it's just like, oh, Cliffjumper suddenly has a bazooka. Where did that come from? Um, but then Transformers Victory, and I believe Super God Master Force, and Headmasters? Um, Whenever they would pull a weapon out, it would be, like, teleported into their hands, and I always thought that was, like, a really cool touch. But, getting back on this, the blade itself does not actually store back here, uh, as the it did in the original toy and the Masterpiece toy. Um, part of that, well, actually all of that, is because of the engineering um, that we needed to do for the combining gimmick and the transformation, like as you can see, the blade is huge and that area is not that big to be able to hold it. Um, so the blade actually stores in the leg. That goes all the way down, uh, like that. Um, it's very easy to pull out and there should, there's enough space in there that it should not scratch any deco. Next up we have the shield. This part's a little loose right now. We're gonna tighten that. Um, but essentially, it pegs onto the arm like that. Oops. Or, you can actually hold it. Do, do, do. 
like this. And this is another thing that we're tightening to make sure that he can do. Because um, right now it's just a little loose. And another thing that this does is it acts as a sheath. So essentially, you can store the blade in there, and then it can still peg onto his arm, which we thought that was a cool storage idea. Um, and then of course it's got a bunch of five millimeter holes back there, so you can also take his blaster and store it back there. You can also store other weapons because we use five millimeter ports for everything, right? Um, but yeah. The sword also, we have five millimeter hole right there on the side of his waist, so like a true samurai or a knight. You can store the sword at the side of his waist and sort of draw it if needed. And then of course we have his blaster, uh, which looks huge on Saber, but is the perfect height for Star Saber. So, so obviously he can completely rotate his arms. They can bend out that way. They can bend inward, as you've seen. He has technically a double bicep joint. Wrist rotation. And then his fingers open and close. It's basically the jet fire commander kind of gimmick where a five millimeter uh, hole comes out to be able to accept accessories but then when his hand is open, it retreats inside the thumb. Um, he can bend his waist forward and back, turn, his head can also turn and look up. Uh, ratcheting joints to the thighs, knee joint. Got ankle, ankle swivels, and then I guess you can technically say that his toes. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. His toes can also articulate as well. So, yeah, I guess let's put this guy in base mode first while we eject Saber. So, very similar to the masterpiece, you have to press this release button right back here. Um, and then open up these gray flaps, and that will eject Saber. So, we're going to put him aside for now. I am going to take the helmet, though. Okay, so base mode, and then we'll do jet and everything else. So we're going to fold in the hands. Ooh, it's tight. Fold that in. Fold that in. Let's put his... Put his skirt up, like that. I'm gonna rotate these forward. Let's put his toes in. the camera down slightly. Okay. Do, do, do. Put the back down. Take the shield, and the shield has tabs on the side that lock into these gray pieces. Which, please excuse my jitteringness. This is my first time doing anything like this with a camera. Okay. Take the helmet. Fold up the mask. Put the antenna down. Okay, 
And then, of course, let's put the blaster over here. Okay. So then we have his base mode. <laughs> Which is what we're going to start out with, and then we'll actually transform the V-Star into the jet and everything like that. But with this, actually, let's jump over to Saber then and show off his transformation. Okay, so here we have Saber in his chest mode. So let's put him into robot mode, shall we? So we can pop out the arms very easily. Let's put the legs. Extend them. that. Flip up his knees. Okay, I am going to use a screwdriver here because the ball joints for his hands are a little tight. So, pop out his hands, and voila. We have Saber. His face is a little hard to see because it's completely clear at the moment, but it will be better in the next iteration, I promise. Heightwise, Star Saber as well. So here, you can essentially see how big he is compared to the other Deluxe. Here he is next to an Optimus Prime. As well. Now, of course, transformation isn't complete. Uh, I forgot to add the hilt onto his shoulder. There we go. center. Give you a nice little roundabout. There you go. Here he is manning his base. Okay, so here's Saber. He has all the articulation you would expect for a deluxe bicep. He can swivel his wrists because they're on a ball joint. His head can look left and right. He's got a waist turn, an ab crunch because of his transformation. Knees, ankle. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, accessory-wise, he can obviously wield his sword. <laughs> it looks a little big and a little ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, I gotta extend the... You have to extend the hilt, otherwise it locks you out from putting the blade in. There we go. Yeah, so... And if you want to give him a gigantic sword... Which can look pretty frickin' fun. <laughs> um, uh, here's his blaster. Which is huge. It's obviously got a 3mm port at the end, so you can attach blast effects to it. Which these blast effects obviously didn't come in the right color. They'll just be green. For the real release, it, this was just the blast effects they probably had left over. So, all right, and then of course we can talk about his brain master, the brain of courage. So, pop up in his chest, and here you see it. Let's get him on out. It's really. Get a close up here. So this is Brain of Courage. Arms are on a ball joint, so they can raise and lower. And then his legs are on a swivel. <laughs> and of course, just to compare, <laughs> here it is next to a Titan Master, so you can kind of see the size difference. All right, let's do the transformation into jet mode. So, flipping the hands. Pop 
pop up his chest, put the head on in. Slip his feet up. Let's just open those. that, about the wings, the tail fins, pop in the nose cone, flip open the cockpit, let's get our pilot on in there, there we go. And here we have Saber in his jet mode. <laughs> Which, of course, I made sure that these were Blast Effect compatible. So he can really soar. Another thing I, sh I should have talked about when we were on Star Saber is um, in one of the first models that we showed off, we had a bunch of scribe line details on here. Um, we removed them because we're gonna uh, hot stamp foil onto here. So it's gonna be like a really nice metallic gold, uh, very reminiscent of like the masterpiece and the G1 toy. So yeah. Okay, here we go. Base to jet. Uh, so first I'm gonna take the shield off. Let's take the helmet off as well. We're gonna put those aside for a moment. Okay. So, first things first. This joint is very tight, so just give me a moment here. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, I gotta get my screwdriver. As I said, EP1. Don't worry, it won't be this tight when the final model comes out. There we go. Oh. Okay. Hold up the legs, tap that in, let's see if this one's going to give me any trouble. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so, we fold that in, we tab panels back in so they are locked in place. Bring the arms down so that it tabs like that and like that. Do the other side as well so that it tabs in like that and that. Okay, we're locked in. Flip it on over. Lower the back plate. Flip down the wings, fold up the tail fins, we have the V-Star. Well, almost. Forgot some things, didn't I? Let's put the helmet on. There we go. Okay. And then, of course, we can put the landing gear out. Just like that. So we take Saber. Fold down the tail fins, fold up the wings. Make sure that these panels are out like that. And he just slides right in. Should hear a click. And voila. Oop. There we go. And then we can add the blaster right there. And also a fun thing that Yuki put in, storage for the shield. So the shield actually stores right here on the back plate, which is actually really nice. It, it really helps kind of bring all the white together. So 
And of course, when it's painted, it will have a nice blue stripe there in the Autobot symbol. So, yeah. So, here we have the V Star Jet, or Star Saber in jet mode, whatever you want to call it. Of course, the Last Effect compatible. Right back there. Okay, so here we have Victory Leo, formerly God Jinrai. Looking pretty nice. Um, the yellow came in a little pale on this sample. I'm not sure how it's going to show up in this video, but in person it is very pale. Um, so Yuki and I were talking and we're going to add just a tad bit more red into the mixture so it should look more accurate. Uh, but that's normal when you're working with an EP1 sample. Uh, so, size comparison. I know that, I think on copy and pack we're saying that he's relatively Voyager scale, but he's very meaty, very chunky. He's kind of more leader-esque. Here, we'll go into articulation. I'll be honest, um, his blasters on the back, the what are these? These are the V-Lock rifles, or the V-Lock cannons. Oh, I know there was a huge discrepancy with that. Uh, Takara Tomi called this the V-Lock cannon, um, but I know in the show this was the V-Lock rifle, and these being much smaller, I don't know. But yeah, so these came in very loose, so I have sticky wax them, and by loose I mean they were flopping all over the place. So that will obviously be improved in the next sample. I'm just being honest as I'm showing this off, if they kind of fall off or you see some gunk, that's sticky wax, so. Articulation. He also has a little bit of a butterfly joint so he can bring his arms in like that. Obviously, shoulder articulation, bicep articulation, wrist articulation, they can swivel. His head can turn. He does not have a waist articulation uh, because of the transformation. His thighs move out like that. They're on ratchet joints. He can come forward and back. Knees. And then his feet even articulate. Um, technically, his ankle articulation is in his feet. So. So, accessories. Or the V-Lock cannon. Uh, so, several different ways that he can hold this. Flip it out like this. You can hold it like... Hold it like that. Pop that off. Switch the connection. You can then just tab right there. If you needed to. We've also added a tab over here. Um, this is actually for when he's in the Victory Saber combination, so we'll get to that when we get to that. There. You can take these off and they can go on his arms, or he can even hold them. They are also hinged. Which is a little tight, but you see there's a little hinge on here, so when they're on his back, they can hinge up and down. Uh, but you can obviously bring them forward as well, just like that. His face doesn't have any deco right now, so his eyes are black, so obviously that will be painted in the next stage. Okay, let's do lion mode first. That probably makes the most sense, right? All right, here, let's get these back there. Okay, so for lion mode, I'm gonna flip this down, flip these forward, pop out the main. You can just go just like that. Let's put these up.
Rotate the fists. Bring out the lion feet. Open the jaw. Just like that. All right, for the feet, I'm pop these tabs out to kind of be like his little nubby tail. Flip in his robot feet. All right, this is another joint that's a little, oh, I can actually get it. It's a little stiff, but I can get it, okay. I don't need to get my screwdriver. All right, collapse the thighs, merge together the feet, just like that. Rotate out the lion feet. Flip this backpack piece down. You rest right there for a second. Oh, okay, I've already got it in the right configuration. And then the V-Lock Cannon just slides in like that. And there we go. We have Victory Leo in lion mode. It's incredibly menacing. It's actually one of my favorite transformations that they showed in Transformers Victory. It was him crashing as a jet and then he just kind of opens up and then he turns into the lion mode. It was really cool. I'm happy to say I feel like we've replicated it pretty dang well with this character. All right, uh, transformation into the jet because then we get to the full-on merged Victory Saber jet. All right, so let's take this off. Let's fold these out, bring them down, and rotate these around. Close his mouth. Collapse the mane. Flip the head on up. So this is actually really cool. Um, we added a tab in right there. So the arms tab into the wings to kind of lock them in place a little bit better. Um, some of the earlier, that grown model that we had, that gray model did not have that. Um, so it's just nice that we're just kind of locking it more in place. Let's get the feet. And then, of course, there we go. Because <laughs> the thing did not look aerodynamic until you had the cannon on in. So, yes, here we go. Victory Leo Jet. Oop, let's make sure that's down correct. And the other thing that we added, there's three millimeter ports right here. So... So now he can also look like he's soaring through the air with the blast effects. Alrighty. Um, with that then, let's merge them together. Alright, so getting him ready to combine. We remove the lock cannon. We flip this white piece back. I'm going to split the legs to pop in what was his lion nubby tail. I'm going to take off the blast effects. Okay. Okay. Let's bring that up. So, combining these guys together. This tab will go in here on the side of the legs, like so. Lock that in. Then, of course, there are tabs up in here that will then tab into place to really lock this in. Like that. Ooh, that's a satisfying click. Then, you can actually take the shield. You have to move 
the hilt, or the handle, down here to the end. Move those out of the way, and then that will go like this, and then the handle will actually grip what was the pelvis of Victory Leo. So everything can be stored. And then lock rifle we'll add right here. Oh, and actually, yeah. Is that everything? Yeah. Okay. And here we have... God, I, I guess, is this like a super spaceship? Is that what we want to call this? It's certainly like some sort of super jet, but he mostly used it to fly in space. But yeah. Ready to take on any Decepticon threat. Here, you can arch these up. There we go. And of course, with this then, let's talk about the stand. So here we have the stand. It came in a much darker blue than we had originally specced, so we're gonna lighten it. So hopefully the next video that I have, this will be much lighter. Uh, so here's the stand base. We're gonna slot that in right here, like this. That piece cups on to what was Star Saber's pelvis. So you can kind of see it, it accepts it just like that. So here you have the Victory Sable, Victory Sable, Victory Saber in jet mode. Fully merged together. And let's throw on some of the last effects. Oh, uh, let's see, we'll put these here. Let's get the VLOC rifle and VLOC cannon shooting some stuff. Let's zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Actually here, we'll put that right there. So obviously these will be green in the next video, I just have them in these colors for now. So EP1 sample, right? So, but yeah, and with this, I guess we need to show the showstopper, right? The robot mode. So let me get right on that. All right, to the power of editing, I have put these guys back in robot mode. So let's transform them into victory saber. So I'm going to put star saber aside for a second. It's just gonna hang out over there. And hello, Victory Leo. Okay, so we're gonna transform him into his weapon parts. So we're gonna flip up his head, just like that, which then allows us to pull out his chest. So we can then flip out the wings, oh, which actually I should have flipped out this part first. Flip the head on down. Actually, we're supposed to do it upside down. Yes, just like that. Flip these up, turn them around. Fold up the arms. Like so. Tab them into the back of the wings to lock them in place. And what's really fun is, um, so there's multiple ways to connect this so that it locks in very sturdily to Star Saber. However, it is a five millimeter port on the back. So if you happen to have any of our like legacy or generations figures that have a port on the back like that, they can also get powered up with Victory Leo. But this is an Optimus Prime show. This is Star Saber show. So, backpack complete. I'm gonna set that right there for a second and transform the feet. So, split the body, just like that. Fold out the feet. Flip in this little tab here that allows it to connect. 
we're going to condense the thighs like so. Oh, if it wants to condense for me, there we go. Condense the thighs like that, and then you just fold this over till it snaps in place. Pop up these pieces. So the feet connectors are pretty much strictly just for Star Saber. They sadly don't work with anything else. We needed them to be as sturdy as possible. So they only work with Star Saber. For now. Transform the other one. Okay. So we got our boots, we got our back. We take our Star Saber, we fold in his feet. Just like that. This red part will connect to here and we'll clip into place. Work. Just like that. And then you fold up this little foot guard and that will lock it into place. Oof, he's getting tall. Sorry. Okay. And then for the backpack. Backpack tabs in right there. Once it tabs in, you bring the cannons down. And they lock in like that. And then this backpack as well next right here to kind of extra lock it into place. Oof, okay, let's try and get him all in the frame. Because <laughs> now he is Victory Saber. Oh, it's so exciting to be able to work on this. And this figure just came out so good. I'm so happy that you guys liked him enough to fund this project. Size comparison wise, here's Earthrise Optimus Prime, and here is Sea Child. So he towers over them. Okay, moved him off the turntable so you guys can see a nice full body shot of him and all of his magnificent glory. Um, so, the base. The base converts. Like so. And then of course, he has a post on the back of his pelvis. Actually, one second. Forgot I need to take that off and it stores right down there. And there we go. So now we have him on his base. Um, so, Obviously we'll be painting the base when it comes out, so when he is on this, he is actually like a millimeter off of the ground on the base. We did that to kind of help with not scratching the paint. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing all of your guys' wonderful photos that you post. That's always a joy for the team. We always share what we find online. All right, so other accessories, obviously. Vidal Cannon. Can lock in place like this. Going. We can give him his sword as well. Because what is the greatest swordsman in the universe without his blade? Alright. Um, and actually, so weapon storage. He can actually store and wear all the accessories. So, 
We can obviously, we talked about this before, you can store the sword right there. If you lock rifle, or if you lock cannon, if we flip this tab up, let's put the sword back on. I'm gonna fold this up. We added this post. So it can essentially go on to his back like that. And then the shield as well. There are tabs right here, and they can actually plug into that white piece that you saw. So it can store on his back. So now he pretty much just needs like a launch catapult, and then he can. <laughs> Just shoot off into battle. But yeah, um, this is probably gonna wrap this up. I'm sorry, this is very informal. We don't do these so all that often, and I don't know what I'm saying half the time, but we just wanted to give you guys like a quick look at the EP1 and try and go as in-depth as possible with the sample that we got in, try and be as transparent as possible, and expect another update from us when we get in our next sample. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at this, and let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks!